Start game now. Hey guys, welcome to a special, very cool Atari 2600 game lot unboxing. Now, I got this off eBay, and I got it from a guy who's known in video game circles as Vector Gamer. Has his own blog called VectorGamer.com. Also has a YouTube channel called The Retrocade. Now, when I bought this from him, he told me that this collection used to belong to a guy named George Riley. And I believe this is in his autograph. It's kind of difficult to see that he sent me on this Twin Galaxies card. George Riley is the world record holder for Donkey Kong 3. He is the master of Donkey Kong 3. Some people don't even realize that there was a Donkey Kong 3 in the arcades. It was a mix of a platformer and kind of like Galaga and it ditched Mario for Stanley the Bugman. So it's kind of an obscure uh, game in the Donkey Kong series. But yeah, if you want to know the world record holder, his name is George Riley. And according to Vector Gamer, a lot of these games, maybe all of them, came from his own personal collection that he bought from him. So let's get started. These are all silver label or red label or basically games that came out from 1982 on. So these tend to be a little more obscure. They're not your general bl uh, black label games. First up, we're going to start with Alpha Beam with Ernie, one of the Sesame Street titles. And this lot actually had three of them. Not only did it have Alpha Beam, but uh, how about Big Bird's Egg Catch? They had a special controller called the children's controller. I think it was. It was large and yellow, and basically it was a touch pad, except with that. How about Cookie Monsters Munch? So there we go. Starting off with some obscure. You know what? I dig that. I think that's cool, and I'm looking forward to uh, playing those, even though they were made for kids. They were like early educational games. How about a classic? How about Battle Zone for the Atari 2600? We're starting with silver label games now. Crystal castles and some of these games actually have more than one copy because they have various variations how about uh centipede which i already reviewed in episode 111 a really good classic there speaking of classics how about dig dug the 2600 version i reviewed the 7800 version but i haven't got around to the 2600 version yet oh now we got some red label games let's see what we got all right let's see what we got Desert Falcon, again, I reviewed the 7800 version of that one, but not yet the 2600 version. Here's a pair. Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr., which used to be Coleco games, but in the late 80s, Atari uh, licensed them from Coleco. So you got Atari licensing from Coleco, which licensed from Nintendo. So there you go, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Country. The labels are different, but it's still the same game. Here's one I've been looking forward to, Double Dunk. Uh, one of the last sport titles on the 2600. Ah, here's a classic. E.T., which for some reason has Elliot stamped with the number 6. Not sure what's up with that, but I reviewed that way back in episode 9. I reviewed E.T. If that was from a landfill, it'd probably be worth more. Galaxian. What's interesting is I think... George Riley has some Galaxian records on the 2600. I wonder if he broke them with this cartridge. Wouldn't that be interesting? Sometimes I wish I knew the stories behind the cartridges themselves. That would be fascinating. Here's another one I look forward to playing. Junior Pac-Man. Yeah, Ms. Pac-Man and regular Pac-Man may get more publicity, but Junior Pac-Man is supposed to be really good on the 2600. Here's another one I reviewed on both the Nintendo and the 7800, but not yet the 2600, Joust. Love that label art. Arr! Another classic, Jungle Hunt. I really dig these silver label games. Here's one I reviewed in episode 88, and that is The Great Kangaroo, and it is a great game. If you haven't played Kangaroo and you have a 2600, you should look for it now. How about Kroll, based on the motion picture? I've never seen the movie. I have played this when it first came out, so or actually back in the late 80s, so it'll be interesting to pick that one up again. Here's one I reviewed back in episode 138. That's Ms. Pac-Man. Very Another classic game. You know, during this time frame, there was like a video game crash, but Atari was putting out some of their best games they ever done. Games like Mario Brothers. That's right, the Mario Brothers were on the Atari. This is the 2600 version. 
I like video pinball games like David's Midnight Magic or on the 2600. It's just called Midnight Magic. On, on computers, it was called David's Midnight Magic. Millipede, the sequel to Centipede. It's a thousand times better. Get it? Millipede, never mind. Moon Patrol, another good arcade conversion on your Atari VCS or 2600 or 2600 Junior or 7800, which plays 2600 games. Here's one I reviewed. I reviewed this in episode 31, the original Coleco cartridge. This is a re-release. And just so you know, in my original review, I asked if it says in the manual, if you have a 7800 button, push the black and the pause button to make the mazes invisible. But what happened is with the original Coleco, if you got touched by something, they stopped being invisible. And the same thing happens with the red one too. So it is the same game. Phoenix, I reviewed this one real recently. Uh, 163 is when I reviewed it. Another good arcade conversion. I was really excited about this game right here. Pigs in Space. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing uh, Pigs in Space. Let's see what else I got here. So am I. All right, let's see. How about... Okay, this was interesting. Three versions of Pole Position. Now, I re reviewed the original, and you can see how there's some labeled uh, differences. Interesting, they use the same artwork for the 7800 version. But what's funny about Pole Position is one of them, if you look at the end labels... You can see like slightly different fonts and, and wait a minute, pole position. That's awesome. Pole position. I got pole position. I was really happy to get pole position. The red label Cubert, which was a, was released as a Parker brother game, I believe. And now I got two Raiders of the Lost Ark. And if you look at them side by side, they look very similar, but Look at the difference in their labels and the font. That's like some, that's really weird, the difference right there. This one just says Raiders Lost Ark. That's kind of funny to me. For some reason, it makes me laugh. This one, oh, and by the way, I did review Raiders of the Lost Ark in episode 72. Several real sports games, like real sports baseball. And I reviewed that one in 167. Real Sports Boxing, I have not reviewed Real Sports Boxing. Real Sports Football, which I reviewed in 143. Real Sports Soccer, which was also called Real Sports Football in some parts of the world. I reviewed that in 129. Real Sports Tennis, which I have not reviewed yet. And then one of my favorites, Real Sports Volleyball, which includes the shark Easter egg. I did two videos of that, one of the Easter egg, and in episode 130, I did a full review. You should check it out. You should just play some Real Sports Volleyball. Go ahead, play a game of Real Sports Volleyball. Come right back to see that I got Secret Quest. Very interesting. Has Nolan Bushnell's picture on it. He was one of the original founders of Atari. But he didn't program the game. His company did. But he still uh, got a lot of credit for it. Here's a classic. Solaris. Which I think was originally called Flight of the Navigator based on that. Or The Last Starfighter. I think that's what it was. It was based on the movie The Last Starfighter originally. Here's another children's game. The Sorceress Apprentice starring Mickey Mouse. And how about that blue label? I like this too. It's a classic. It's Space Invaders, but it's a silver label. And I, I, I like the silver label. I think it looks really sharp in silver. Space Invaders always looks good, no matter what color it's in. Except orange. Doesn't look good in orange. All right. My pile is piling up. Sprint Master, which, guess what? Let's move these. Look at the artwork of Sprint Master. Look at the artwork of Pole Position. Hmm. They're getting kind of cheap there. Got two of these Stargates, which was also called Defender 2 in a red label. And I got two of them because look at the um, different fonts there. I really like this. This reminds me of Laser Tag and the TV show V for some reason. I, I like that font. Super Baseball. Huh. Sword Quest. Earth World. Whatever. Eh, Sword Quest, Fire World, whatever. Look forward to playing this one. Taz. And Vanguard. Great artwork. Vanguard, um, I reviewed in episode 130. 
very innovative game. And then finally, Venture, another game that was originally released by Coleco in a white cartridge and now in a red label. So there you go. Thank you guys for enjoying this unboxing with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Uh, kind of looks like He-Man's cousin, doesn't it? And he's fighting uh, Cobra's pet, you know, Cobra G.I. Never mind. Anyways, be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons. Uh, you can uh, also help me out on Patreon as well if you wish. You can follow me on Facebook and you can check out all my other videos. I look forward to reviewing some of these as well soon. And I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the No Store Gamer. So take care, everybody, and go play some Atari today.